Hello, this is damdoc 82 and we're back here for part two of my tank build. And here we are with the chassis that uh, I built last time. Uh, I gotten rid of the AI and all that stuff from uh, last time because uh, we don't really need it for this next part. I'll probably I will be replacing it, but uh, for this episode we're going to be working on the hull of the tank. So, let's go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so, um, I decided to do a post-commentary on this. Um, I, uh, I had a few coughing fits partway through this. I'm still trying to get over this cold, but um, anyway. So, here I am doing the front armor of the tank. Um, now, the thing about uh, armoring your tank, you want to use slopes on the front of it. And uh, slopes are really one of your best friends in this game when it comes to armor schemes. So, um, yeah, we're going to be putting a few slabs of metal up there, and it's going to be backed with uh, heavy armor. And. Then uh, I'm going to grab some wood here and I'm going to use that as a spall liner. Now the way the spall liner works is um, if you know anything about the mechanics of how a hesh well, works is uh, hesh is going to travel through the armor and uh, then it's going to uh, basically turn into like a, uh, a frag type weapon where it sprays fragments on the other side of the armor and the the frag it's going to take the armor class of the uh, last material that it passes through so that's why I'm using wood on the inside they're like this so now we're just adding in some more slopes here and then I'm gonna grab some more heavy armor to back that up with also, uh, use, try to use full beams when you can when you're building with armor because it just uh, gives more overall hit points. Okay, so I'm putting a back to the spell liner here. There we go. And we're going to be put in the uh, ammo store. There we go. Now, in current version, um, having a large ammo stockpile like this probably isn't going to do you near as much good uh, because. Um, the, uh, they're you know, trying to make ammo to where it doesn't regenerate anymore if they haven't already. I think they they turn off ammo regen, and uh, you have to rely on um, ammo processors, which uh, fortunately got nerfed into the ground, like everything else has been lately. But that's another story for another day. Um, here we go. No, we're just doing some of the side armor. I'm leaving a gap in there on purpose between the uh, side and the internal armor. Uh, that's just to uh, give this tank some extra resistance to heat and hash. Air gaps are a great uh, way to uh, stop uh, heat. And they can be uh, somewhat effective against uh, hash as well. Depending on uh, if you put in a spall liner like I'm doing again here, uh, I decide to go with the uh, stone here instead because stone has a lot more hit points. Um, I'm going to replace those you know, with a, a different type of stone piece. I think I go with the one that's uh, still 4 meters long but cut at a 45 degree angle. So in that way, there's your contact points uh, where the uh, the the two, uh, the two blocks will meet. Where the, uh, the two blocks will meet the uh, the 
those are uh, kind of dangerous because uh, that's where a Hessian heat can transfer all the way through. So I'm trying to eliminate those. There we go. And this spot right here in the middle, that's where we're going to be plunking down our AI eventually. But for right now, uh, I'm going to seal off the, uh, the ammo stores there. And I'm going to put like a little bit of a uh, indention there. And that's where the turret is going to sit. Now there's two different ways that you can do turrets. But uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Right now we're putting in the AI. Um, I'm probably going to end up having to re-Tetris this later on. I didn't quite like how I had it set up. There we go. And uh, just for right now, I think I'm going to go ahead and just plot down a 3 meter turret. Lose the spin block anyway, and uh, I'm going to put in just a little bit of a spell liner. I think I. Uh, originally go with wood, but then I decide, no, I better do this with stone. Uh, this is just so uh, we try to further mitigate damage that uh, could potentially be transferred to the turret block, should the uh, tank take any uh, heat or hash damage. Now, there's a few different ways that you can do turrets. You could either have the turret sit on top of your hull, or you could have the turret sit inside your hull. Uh, more on that later. Uh, right now, it looks like I am putting in some... Um, yeah, I'm putting in some detection. I'm going with mostly uh, forward-facing detection because, you know, that's the way the, uh, the tank is meant to operate anyway. In retrospect, I probably should have added a wireless snooper, but this was just a uh, build to kind of demonstrate the uh, principles behind this. Um, wireless snoopers are great because uh, they'll give you detection and uh, it's a block that you can place inside the tank, which uh, will uh, make it a little more harder to damage, whereas most detection has to be on the outside of the vehicle. Of course, there you can still use visual sensors if you use the uh, portholes, which give you armor. So uh, that's, a, that's an option that you could try looking into as well. There are some turret caps where I try to incorporate um, using portholes in front of a uh, visual sensor so then that way um, they'll have some armor and won't get blown off so easily. Um, at first I was thinking maybe I want to try to do a fuel engine but then I was like no screw it. Uh, my reasoning for this being was um, fuel engines are great and all but as far as uh, when it comes to tank building uh, it can make a weak spot in your armor because of the uh, the hull pipes that you'll need to vent the engine correctly. So instead, I uh, decide to go with a steam turbine setup. Got two boilers. going to do some piping. This is just a very, very simple uh, steam boiler system setup I have here. And the great thing about uh, the steam turbines, at least at the time that this uh, video is made, 
you can have them as big or as small as you want. It will not affect performance whatsoever as far as I know. So you could have like the smallest steam turbine ever and it's going to have the same output as a huge one that takes up multiple locks. So right now I'm just trying to figure out how big a battery I'm going to need. Uh, I decide I want to go with two of them for just a little bit of redundancy. Though I think in retrospect I probably should have just taken it back down to well, one uh, electric motor because I probably don't need two of them. So yeah, one of those uh, electric motors is superfluous entirely. So now I'm just trying to think I have to want to armor the inside. I go with the uh, 4 meter slopes. This is just to give it uh, an some additional uh, spaced armor so that way if uh, heat net or hash manages to travel in there it'll have to give it some more resistance and right up here is uh, where we're going to be putting our shelf for the turret I go with uh, my pretty much standard uh, 400 millimeter 2 meter round and, uh, hash round that's pretty good for a lot of applications. I wouldn't say it's meta, I would just say it just... For a good overall shell, what has just works great for that kind of thing. So now we're working on the rear of the tank. And I'm going to go with some slopes. A uh, great thing about slopes is um, if your vehicle happens to go a little over volume and you got a bunch of metal beams, replace them with like a, a four meter long uh, heavy armor slopes. And now I, uh, I added a few extra wheels to the back so I was just making sure that I got all the wheel settings uh, copied over to it. And uh, I'm going to give this some additional armor towards the back. And it looks like I'm about to re-Tetris this AI section here. So it has some more uh, signal processing room. There we go. And I'm probably going to start on the turret very shortly here. Uh, no, actually I think I'm going to put in some ACBs. And some... Uh, resource storage and some RTGs. I like using RTGs uh, kind of as a uh, backup power and uh, it'll uh, give the vehicle power when it's not in combat so we can still move across the map. Blocks. Uh, those are going to help regulate the power. Um, it's going to turn. I'm sorry. It's going to turn off those the steam turbines whenever there is no enemy present, and it'll turn them back on once an enemy hit. Um, we also are going to do something similar with shields here on the other side, and I think I might use uh, some uh, some of the room here in the back. Bots. I think I put at least two of them in this tank. I'm just going over the settings here. This is a very good thing to use on a lot of your builds. Uh, having automated control blocks to turn your shields off and on whenever enemies are present or not present. So that way you can save yourself a little bit of power. I think I'll leave that space open just in case I come up with uh, some other things that I can put in there. Uh, for right now, we're going to do the turret. Now, the turret style that I kind of go with on this build, um, it's going to be a turret that sits on top of a hull. Now, for sitting 
on top of the hull as opposed to sitting in the hull. Um, on top of the hull gives you a couple of advantages. Um, it makes the profile of the tank smaller, so that way it uh, makes you a harder target to hit. But at the same rate, you can't hit near as many auto rotors as you normally would be able to. Also, you can't make the uh, barrel of your gun uh, very long with a watched enough of my stuff by now you know I absolutely hate it. So yeah, um, think about the setup that I'm using. If, with a little bit of modification it may work in current version. So there's that. Uh, I think the only thing that this was really missing was um, probably some recoil absorption. Um, it's always good to try to uh, make the bottom of these turrets, at least the very front parts, out of uh, something like uh, heavy armor like I got here because uh, explosion creep can be a thing, which basically means explosive damage may creep up underneath the turret and cause damage to the inside. So I'm going to armor up this bit here. And we're going to put in the um, the uh, ammo intakes. And I go with this mantlet because this thing isn't going to really be trying to shoot an aircraft at all. Uh, if you go with the three or the AA mantlet, that's probably a you know, better use for that. So that's the reason why I'm going with that. Uh, the thing I like about uh, trying to recess the, uh, the matlet in the, uh, the firing piece is so that way it's less likely to take damage. Uh, because if you have that shot off, then you then you don't really have a tank anymore. You just have an armored box. And just beefing up the, uh, the side of armor of the turret here. Uh, another benefit to doing the turret like this is it leaves more internal room for armor and uh, whatever else you can put on the inside of it. So that's another good uh, reason to do it this way. But uh, I just kind of wanted to keep things simple here, so that's one of the reasons why I go uh, with this kind of turret. It, it's, uh, it's a much simpler type of turret to build in, instead of uh, having the turret uh, going down into the inside of the tank. There's a lot less that uh, you have to worry about and a lot less that you have to make room for. Um, right about here, I am p trying to find a way to put in a, uh, an additional weapon system. Uh, it'll be like a uh, twin auto cannons on a, um, a two axis turret. These are super handy to have because they give you just a little AA um, and uh, it's kind of cool because it gives the tank a little flavor. In current, you might be uh, better off using the 30 mil auto cannons. Uh, those things have a pretty insane rate of fire right now, and uh, their damage got buffed pretty good. I've been meaning to test them in a Sea Wiz because uh, I have seen them in 2.4.9 shoot down a missile every now and then, so. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to slap some oblique panels on the front of this. This turret will probably get shot off a whole lot, but it's mostly just there to give it some light anti-air capability and just uh, give the tank a little bit of flavor, make it look more interesting. So 
So right about here, I decide that uh, I want to give this thing just a little more uh, detection redundancy. So I'm going to put um, a camera and a uh, laser rangefinder here on the uh, the top back side of the turret. armor it up a little bit. I'm going to come back here with um, some uh, metal panels to cover up uh, these uh, AI connectors here later on. It uh, makes it look a little nicer and makes it just a little more damage resistant. Alright, so we're good there. Give a little more armor to the back of the turret. Give it some nice shaping. shot off so um, we're going to put some firing restrictions on this little turret here on top of the tank of course you have to go and uh, change the settings and the, uh, the auto cannons as well there we go just double checking my settings Uh, do an auto adjust on the sensors. Then we set up the shell. It's just, like I said, going to be like a 400 millimeter hash round. You always want to max out that special factor. Another advantage to uh, building your turret, if uh, you have most, if you have the turret actually inside the hull of the tank itself, is uh, you have more of the vital components protected a whole lot better than you would in this kind of setup. Um, I think I might do a part three of this series where uh, I show you guys how to do that. Also, um, I failed to mention this at the beginning, but uh, I put a link in the uh, video's description. Just to uh, test my here. I, uh, yeah, I put a link in the video's description to where you can uh, download a, a copy of this tank from Steam Workshop. And I th think about right here. Here I want to see if I can add some additional auto loaders, but um, it doesn't seem to work out because uh, I don't have enough cooling to make it viable. So instead, I'm going to end up using that space to put in some shielding for the turret. And it's going to get backed up with a couple of um, surge protectors. There we go. Now we're just going to like spawn in a house to make sure that the tank is working correctly. As you can see, it is working its way to where the uh, it's getting itself onto the target. And then it's just going to start backing away slowly. We're just going to spawn in another large house just to run the shield so we can see uh, where we would like to have them positioned. Uh, I end up going for some fairly easy shields here, uh, strength 5, because that offers pretty decent 
massive uh, cramp resistance once you get to about strength by the coffee. I go with a, a bit of a butterfly configuration for this. Yeah, this will give us pretty good protection for the front of the tank. And whatever the shields can't uh, handle, the armor will take up. Yeah, we're making the shields just a little bit smaller here so they use up a little less power. Again, these shields will only come on in combat. And we're just going to let it pummel this poor little house. But as you can see, it's uh, it's not too badly priced here, considering it's got two RTGs in it. That's roughly really close to the same price as a uh, a Taipan. And in most cases, we'll be able to uh, take the Taipan toe to toe. I think we uh, managed to take out its uh, turret in the first shot there because the uh, the turret on the Taipan won't take any more additional shots at us until it's dead. Um, the gun could probably use just a tad more accuracy if I'm to be honest. Uh, I probably would have made it, yeah, just maybe uh, another maybe three, four meters longer just to uh, get more accuracy out of it. Yeah, it's going to maintain 500 meters from the target and it's going to keep the uh, front of the tank facing towards the target and until either the tank itself is dead or the target is. I even tested this out against a um, some on it watch designs just to uh, show you guys how resistant the armor is to uh, cram rounds. I don't know why it turned to the side and fired like that, but weird. As you can see, uh, it uh, took down that Taipan. Probably took way more shots than I would have preferred. Uh, now it's going to go looking for this bison that I just spawned in out there. As you can see, it's going to roll up to the target and turn to face it. Actually, it gets a few decent shots off on it before uh, the uh, bison ever gets within range. I'm not even sure what the hell the bison is shooting at right there, because there's nothing out that way. Yeah, there's a really nasty hash hit right there where it blows off half the turret there. Hesh, when you hit Onyx Watch, no, with it, Hesh is like, oh, you have heavy armor, that's cute. You see, even when the barrel has been sheared off, it's just going to keep coming for you. I mean, it's taken several cramps to the face at this point, and it's just going to keep going. Of course, at this point, the, uh, I think the explosion damage finally got to the gauges, but yeah, um, 
it's a it's a pretty simple but effective design. Just wanted to look at the stats of the gun there. And we're just going to spawn in another type in here real quick. Just for a little additional testing. Um, it doesn't do so well against the Taipan this round because um, it takes a nasty hit to the turret where it, uh, it'll it take out the mantle and the firing piece. <laughs> so in retrospect, I probably should have recessed that back a little farther into the turret. But I thought the... Um, the shielding would probably uh, give it more than enough protection, but yeah, as you can see right about there, that's where the uh, the, not, the uh, gun got sheared off. I gave it a quick repair so it could uh, finish off that tight pan. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Um, I hope you guys learned a few things from it. Uh, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. This was Damodoc 82's uh, Tank Building Tutorial Part 2. Uh, in Part 3, uh, we're going to look at uh, trying a different type of turret design where the turret actually sits inside the tank instead of on top of it. So, uh, yeah, have yourselves a hell of a day, and keep your hammer high. Later.